Following the lesson uh, 18 example that was a time dependent loading of a beam, in lesson 19 we're also going to be studying a time dependent loading of a beam but in a different mode. In lesson 8 or in lesson 18 we did an impact or impulse loading condition which was a sudden load applied to the middle of a beam in uh, a millisecond. This time I'm going to apply a sinusoidal load to a beam so if I have uh, this beam um, one end fixed like this and um, let's say I'm applying a load like this which is a function of time and let's say it's a uh, a times sine uh, pi over 4 times t t is the time and a is the magnitude or amplitude and let's give amplitude of um, 1000 newtons so f t or f function of t is going to be 1000 times uh, sine pi over 4 t um, so the material is going to be steel again um, so the uh, properties are 200 gigapascals for elasticity and uh, 0.3 for Poisson's ratio. The cross section, like before or like yesterday or lesson 18, is going to be uh, one centimeter to one centimeter cross section. And this length I'm going to um, give uh, 10 centimeters, which is equal to 100 millimeters. And, uh, or I guess, yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. And, uh, like yesterday, we're going to do, or I should say lesson 18, uh, what I will do is I will pick transient as uh, the analysis type. And this time we're going to, uh, we're going to study full uh, analysis or full analysis instead of um, the radius model that we did in lesson 18. This I'm going to go with full and then the other thing that I'm going to teach is how to write uh, or how to define parameters in ANSYS. So basically I'm going to define this parameter and save it in ANSYS and then read it and uh, use it for my uh, uh, load and uh, at this end of the beam and again I'm going to use a uh, beam 189 for uh, this is beam actually beam 189 for my element and uh, I'm going to use sections to give the cross-section area and uh, yes uh, that's basically how we're going to proceed with this example so let's go to ANSYS and do this uh, simulation alright uh, in ANSYS the first thing is I'm gonna come and pick structural in preferences as I said it's optional you may just leave this uh, or skip this uh, step I just want to make sure that everything I have is structural dependent or relevant when I come to preprocessor come to element type and pick my element click add beam 189 click OK and I'm going to stick with the defaults and the option so click OK and close this window this element type does not have real constants so I can skip to material properties and define my material model in here structural linear elastic isotropic 200 gigapascals in here and 0.3 for Poisson's ratio and this is all I need for this uh, analysis come to sections beam common sections again pick this uh, square cross section I'm not gonna give a name for that I just give uh, if I want to give this one centimeter by or let's define it by half a centimeter by half a centimeter uh, which is uh, five millimeters by five millimeters and uh, divide that 
by 5 and 5 so if you look at the mesh view it's 5 mm uh, 5 mm in uh, in this direction 5 mm in this direction and each uh, side is divided by 5 uh, segments for meshing click OK come to modeling I want to create two key points at, e at the two ends so uh, come to inactive CS first one is one gonna be on the origin so I click apply so the first key point is uh, made at this uh, very origin of my coordinate system the next one is gonna be at the X of 100 millimeters which is 10 centimeters click OK so the two key points are made come to lines and create a straight line between these two key points now it's time to mesh the material or, or the line so the first thing is I'm gonna do manual size for lines all lines because I only have one line and I can divide it to let's say 20 uh, elements then I can come to mesh pick lines pick this line and click OK so my line is also meshed before proceeding from uh, to the loading condition I want to come to parameters and come to functions define edit and uh, define the function that I want to apply or uh, define for this uh, loading condition so if you remember the amplitude was thousand times sine and then I want to say pi or four times time so inverse this pi is in here and one thing to remember is anything between these brackets is going to be regarded as a constant so I'm going to delete that so that ANSYS will remember that this pi is actually the pi which is 3.14 and um, to whatever digit that ANSYS wants to use and then divide this by 4 times I pick time from here you see in this um, uh, list you can pick X Y Z so it's uh, uh, location related also temperature and other parameters you can use but I'm gonna stick with time so time in red means that this is a uh, parameter that ANSYS recognizes it's not regarded as a constant that we should define for ANSYS so this is what I'm gonna define I come to here in file save go to ANSYS and give a name to that I'm going to call it loading uh, uh, I'm gonna transient I'm going to stick to here loading trans save and close this window come to parameters again functions and read from file loading trans and so if you remember, if you see the result equals thousand times sine pi over four times time, and I'm going to give a name to that one. I'm going to call trans thousand, or it doesn't let me go from there. So trans load, which is longer than eight characters. That's that's okay. I'm going to call it trans load. That's fine. Okay. I can uh, I come to loading or load and come to analysis type and go to new analysis and instead of picking static I'm gonna pick transient to make sure this is a time dependent loading click OK and this time I'm gonna pick full as the uh, solution method and click OK then I come to define loads the first thing is uh, structural displacement on key points and pick this key point on the left and make sure that all degrees of freedom are zero click OK then I come to force key point again pick this end key point and I want it to be in the Y direction but this time instead of picking constant value as apply as I'm gonna pick existing table and don't put any number in the value click OK and the table that I defined in the previous uh, step is shown to me so just click OK and this load is uh, being applied now I can come to solution again analysis type there is solution controls click that one 
and there are a couple uh, parameters that you have to define in here. First of all, you want to go with time increment instead of uh, sub steps. So I'm going to pick this. The time at the end of load step, I'm going to say let's go to um, uh, 20 seconds and time steps of uh, let's say 1. And for each step, I want to write every sub step. So for uh, every analysis, I want to uh, have the values or I want to have answers, write the values or the results. I click that one. So we're done with the basic tab. I come to transient and I want to have ramped loading instead of stepped loading. And uh, so we're done with this solution control. So basically I came here and defined the end time and the time increment and, and I said that I want I want it to be in time increment instead of number of sub steps. And also here I came and picked uh, write every sub step to make sure that all the sub steps are being written or saved by ANSYS. And the results that uh, I can pick are here basically or by default all solution items are picked or selected by ANSYS, the ones that are applica applicable to this model. I can come change this one or come to user selected but I want to stick with all solution items and in transient I said that I want ramped loading. I can click OK and come to solve and this time I can again I can pick current LS or load step. OK and after a little while solution is done. Now if I come to time history, uh, time history post process similar to what we saw in lesson 18 I am I'm shown this window so I pick degrees of freedom and this time I'm going to pick Y OK and the node is going to be this node at this end and let's uh, see the graph so this is the way that uh, the end point is uh, deforming or uh, moving back and forth or up and down. And since it's a uh, sin sinusoidal load, everything is uh, like a, a sine graph in here. And uh, but since at the time of zero there is no displacement, probably that's why this uh, this portion of the graph is not uh, drawn. Also, I can come and um, define another parameter. Let's say um, a Y component of rotation. I don't know if it will work, but let's try different elements or different uh, parameters that we can define in here. Click Apply. Okay, this is not going to work. And the reason I see is that the minimum, the maximum for rotation is zero. But I can come to Velocity, for example, and pick Velocity in Y direction, click apply and pick this end again, OK. And that's it. Cancel, let me delete this one first. And let's plot velocity. So this is the velocity plot of uh, that endpoint. And the other thing you want to know is that you're not bound to pick the endpoint. So for example, let's say I want to pick this displacement in y direction okay I'm supposed to pick a node right so I come to elements and I pick this node for example somewhere in the middle okay and it has also some maximum and minimum which is less than the maximum and minimum of the endpoint but I can also plot plot this one still sinusoidal but the maximum and minimum values are different so you see that you don't have to pick just exactly the end uh, or the uh, end key points or nodes. You can pick as many no uh, whichever node that you want. And also you can click this button and see the uh, list result for that. So for every second you can have the values and uh, you can save this file and uh, use it in Excel to plot it. Let's get back to general post process and uh, read results, the first step or the first first set and before going to uh, plot results I'm going to show you something and I'm going to read the reaction solution for all items. 
This is for the first set. Now let's uh, read again for let's say a time a time of uh, let's say five seconds. Click OK. Now go go back to list results reaction solution again. There is a little change, but not that much. So the F Y is becoming positive, exactly the opposite uh, of uh, uh, the one that we had before. The M Z is also positive in here, but the M Y, uh, yeah, M Y and, uh, and M X are also changing their uh, sign. And let's come here and say last set, and again, reaction solution for all loads and this time everything is completely different so we have three sets of uh, reaction solution values in here for diff three different uh, time steps of uh, this solution that you can compare so you you want to know the reaction at each time of this analysis so you just come here and read results and pick the one the first or last or first and next and previous or by time frequency you can also try other functions and see how they work for you then also you can come here plot results control plot and then let's say nodal solution in y direction or displacement in y direction you see this now let's read the first set again and come back to this plot controls nodal solution why I'm going to move this here and you need to pay attention to these numbers in here and see how they change these numbers changed you, you may not see this change in here in this graph but you can look at this uh, uh, legend here and see that uh, the numbers change which means at each time step the displacement of this beam at every location is uh, changing I can also come to pl pl vector plot and plot that so this is the way it's changing and uh, also you can come to like previous examples or lessons you can come to here and pick uh, nodal loads or nodal solution and list them uh, as you wish and you can do this for every time step that you want and uh, so basically that's uh, the end of uh, lesson 8 uh, 19 which was uh, loading on a sinusoidal uh, pattern